Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Have you ever heard the claim by Roman Catholics that uh, Peter was the first Pope? They call it apostolic succession. They think they can trace the history of the Popes all the way back to uh, Peter being the first. Well, I think that's false. I do not think Peter was the first Pope. Uh, I do have an idea on who I think was the first Pope, and I will try to reveal that to you at the end of this video. But first I want to discuss uh, exactly what Roman Catholicism is, and then just try to determine who that fir first Pope was. So, I believe that Roman Catholicism is simply nothing more than Judaism and adding Jesus to Judaism. And I'm going to do a little comparison now to, to compare Judaism and Roman Catholicism and you'll see these great similarities. Um, Judaism has a priestly hierarchy. Uh, the, uh, the Levites were the, the people who were the priests uh, of the, the twelve sons of uh, Isaac, I mean uh, Jacob. Jacob had his name changed to Israel. He had 12 sons, and one of the sons, Levi, his descendants would be the priests. Well, these priests uh, had a hierarchy, and they had one priest that was designated as the high priest. So in Roman Catholicism, you see the same kind of a thing, uh, a priestly society that is separate from the general society that... Uh, uh, has a hierarchy. They, uh, they have uh, priests, uh, bishops, cardinals, and then the ultimate high priest they call the Pope. Um, now in Judaism they also have um, uh, costumes. The, the priests, and if you go to scriptures, there's a detailed description of the clothing the priests wore, and uh, particularly the special clothing that the high priest wore. You have the same kind of thing in Roman Catholicism, uh, clothing that is made for certain uh, offices in the priesthood. And you've all seen the, the you know, cardinals all dressed in red and, and the Pope in his beautiful attire. So they, they, they dress differently to distinguish, distinguish themselves from the general population of believers. Um, Judaism uh, has what we call legalism, a, a system of laws. Uh, in Judaism, they had actually 613 laws, and 10 of those laws were the Ten Commandments. Uh, so it was a very strict legal system that they, they had as part of their religion. And also in Roman Catholicism, we see a very strict legal system. Uh, they also have the Ten Commandments. Uh, even though Roman Catholics actually removed the second commandment, uh, and that is that you shall not uh, uh, bow down and worship idols. Uh, you see in Roman Catholicism all the time people, uh, you know, kneeling and praying in front of, uh, you know, statues. So they got rid of this second commandment that left them with nine. So in order that they would still have ten commandments, they took the tenth commandment, divided it in half, and that gave them two, uh, so they filled out the, the requirement of Ten Commandments. Uh, so in Roman Catholicism, they also have these Ten Commandments, and then they have a whole bunch of laws and legalism established through the Roman Catholic teaching, through the teaching of the popes, uh, uh, things that you must do, uh, part of the laws in being a good Roman Catholic. Uh, they also have traditions. Uh, the traditions in Judaism have been uh, very, very prominent. Uh, the, the writings of rabbis throughout history were, were uh, collected and cherished, and, and uh, a lot of people, even Jesus, argued that uh, they're following the traditions of men. And, uh, and, and certainly, certainly um, uh, in Roman Catholicism, uh, much of their religion comes from the, the traditional teachings of all the various popes uh, throughout history. Um, also, 
rituals are, are very predominant in uh, Judaism. Uh, they have all kinds of festivals and uh, uh, sacrifices uh, that they do that, that is very ceremonial and ritualistic. Uh, that is also true if you go to any Roman Catholic church any Sunday and you sit through one of their services, you'll see how ritualistic it is. Um, part of their ritualism uh, in Judaism is, is a blood sacrifice. Um, Judaism is based upon uh, blood sacrifices. And uh, they, they, if you watch my playlist called uh, Old Testament Pictures and Shadows of Jesus' Blood Atonement, you'll see that uh, all the way back, going back to Genesis, uh, all the way through the Old Testament scriptures, and then in, in Judaism, you have uh, this uh, the concept of uh, the payment of our sins through blood sacrifice. And, and then the, the blood sacrifice that would actually do the job was the death of Jesus Christ, his, uh, uh, the, his death on the cross, his atonement for our sins. So in Judaism, they look forward to this uh, Savior coming and, and being that blood sacrifice. Until then, they would perform blood sacrifices with doves and goats and lambs. And, um, but in Roman Catholicism, they still are practicing blood sacrifice. They, they believe in Jesus' blood sacrifice on the cross for our sins, and they reenact it every Sunday in, in their Mass, uh, that blood sacrifice. They actually believe in what they call a uh, um, transubstantiation. That, that is a word that means that they believe that the the bread that they eat and the wine that they drink in, in communion service uh, literally changes into the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. They do not believe it's a sim symbolic uh, concept. They believe it's literally his flesh and his blood. So they are continuing to carry on this blood sacrifice of, uh, of Jesus uh, every Sunday. Uh, so all of these points uh, they share, right? Roman Catholicism and Judaism. Uh, the, the main distinction in Judaism uh, and Roman Catholicism uh, is that Jews today do not believe the Messiah came. They do not believe Jesus was that Messiah. Uh, whereas Roman Catholics believe the promised Messiah came, it was Jesus. So that's the, the primary distinction there. Uh, the uh, now uh, the, the Roman Catholics continue doing this blood sacrifice every Sunday with communion, but the Jews have stopped their blood sacrifices because they have no temple. Uh, it is their intention someday to rebuild the temple and and, re and restart the blood sacrifices. Um, but it's important to understand that when Jesus was dying on the cross, he made a statement that is the most important statement ever made, and that is, it is finished. Jesus said, as he died on the cross, it is finished. Now, what did that mean? It means that he's accomplished everything that needed to be done so that mankind could be saved and have eternal life in heaven. Uh, all of the uh, ceremonial and ritual things that Judaism did, the, all of the sacrifices of, of you know doves and lambs, and, uh, that was no longer necessary because Jesus himself served as this final complete sacrifice. So it's finished. That means Judaism, the uh, all the rituals, this uh, the, uh, the the blood sacrifices. No need for that anymore. You can stop it. It's finished. Uh, there, there's no need to, for any more sacrifices because Jesus' blood sacrifice was sufficient. It's called the atonement. Uh, uh, scripture says that Jesus was the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation means uh, sufficient payment. Paid, the sin debt is paid in full, so there's no more need for any more blood sacrifices. Uh, let's look at some scripture here talking about that. In Hebrews chapter 10 uh, it says, uh, by the which will we are sac uh, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 
And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Uh, but this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. These scriptures tell us that in Judaism they would continue to have these sacrifices, but they would never really take away our sin. It was just uh, kind of a picture of, of a, a future sacrifice that would really take away our sin. And that was the Messiah dying for our sins. And so it's saying that Jesus, when he died on the cross, uh, it was a sacrifice, it was one sacrifice that would last forever. Um, now, let's look at uh, the soteriology of Roman Catholicism and also of Judaism today. Soteriology is, uh, just means the uh, uh, study of salvation. How do, you, how do you think you get saved? Uh, and in both in Roman Catholicism and in Judaism, it, they believe salvation is, is really based upon uh, the good person test. If you ask someone, uh, do you think you're going to go to heaven? And they, they say, well, I think so, I hope so. And you say, why? If they say to you, well, because I'm a good person. Uh, you know, I, I follow the Ten Commandments or I follow the Golden Rule or I go to church or I, 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 trying to tell you all the things that they do uh, to justify salvation based upon their personal merit. So uh, whether you're uh, in Judaism or Roman Catholicism, they base salvation uh, based on personal merit. If they're good enough, they get to go to heaven. And they never really know if they're good enough. They kind of have their fingers crossed, hoping they've done enough, and God sees they're, they're good enough, and they get to go to heaven. But the what is salvation in Christianity according to the Bible? Well, we're not saved by personal merit. We have to understand that our our personal merit has no value for salvation. We have to reject that and understand that uh, we cannot put our faith in, our, in ourselves, in our own ability to be good enough, and understand that uh, that's, that's hopeless, that's futile, we can't do it. Uh, and instead, we need to put our faith in Jesus to be our Savior and believe that you know, when he died on that cross, he paid for all of our sins, therefore, uh, there's, there's nothing else that needs to be done. Believe what Jesus said. It is finished. It is accomplished. Uh, salvation it can be given to everybody as a free gift. Uh, all, all that you need to get receive the gift is put your faith completely in Jesus, no longer in yourself. So here we have a, a salvation in the Bible teaches us that we're saved simply because of our faith in, in the Savior and not based on any of our personal performance. And you have uh, salvation in Judaism today and in the Roman Catholic Church today based upon personal merit. If you're good enough, you get to go to heaven. So now you see the similarities between uh, Judaism and Roman Catholicism. Uh, so who was the first pope then? Uh, let's, could it have been the Apostle Paul? Let's examine that. Let's look at Acts 16, 30, and 31. Um, it says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Uh, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. So here we have the Apostle Paul asked the question, What do I have to do to be saved? What do I have to do so I can have eternal life in heaven? And the Apostle Paul simply says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Paul, we see, has uh, salvation based upon faith in Jesus, not faith in yourself, not in your personal performance. Uh, he also says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So here we have the Apostle Paul uh, stressing that we're saved only because God has been gracious to us, not because we deserve it. Uh, and that uh, uh, salvation, it comes through our faith in Jesus, not through ourselves, not th through our personal merit, not through our works. 
If we could get to heaven because we preferred well enough, then we'd have the right to boast to each other and boast to God. Look, I, er I deserve heaven. So Paul says, lest anyone should boast, uh, you, you can't get to heaven through your personal merit. You need to put your faith in Jesus completely instead. He also says in Romans 10, 3, talking about uh, uh, basically Roman Catholics here and Jews and most people in the world. He says, for they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and, uh, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So here Paul is saying that there are people who, uh, instead of putting their faith in the righteousness of Jesus Christ for their salvation, they are uh, trying to establish their own righteousness and get saved that way. But it says that's not God's way. God's not way. Way is not through your personal merit. God's way is through faith in Jesus Christ instead. Now, so we know that Paul couldn't be the first pope because his teaching was con totally contradicts the doctrines of Roman Catholicism, of salvation through per personal merit. Uh, so next, I us ask, was it really Peter? Was Peter the first pope, as the Roman Catholics believe? <clears throat> Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. It says in verse 15, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, uh, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, uh, in which are some things hard to be understood, uh, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, uh, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. So we have here the Apostle Paul aligning himself with the teachings of Paul, uh, citing Paul's teachings and s saying that Paul's teachings were scripture. So uh, here we have, Paul says salvation is through faith, not in personal merit, uh, so he couldn't be the Pope. Peter is saying, I agree with Paul's teaching, his teachings are scriptures. And he, Peter also says in Acts 10, Verse 43, I'll start. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, they're talking about Jesus, through his name, Jesus, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sins. Uh, so Peter's teaching, whoever believes in Jesus receives the remission of sins. So he's talking about salvation through faith in Jesus, not salvation as Roman Catholics teach through personal merit. Um, so now let's ask next, uh, could it have been, the first pope have been the Apostle John? Uh, uh, in the Gospel of John, uh, I'll read uh, chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. It says, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Believing in him, speaking of Jesus. So it says, whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So he's saying over and over again, whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but have eternal life. Uh, he goes on to say, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world uh, uh, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, Jesus Christ, is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, uh, I've given you just a few verses in John that, were, that say the distinction between someone who is saved and not saved is one thing. If you believe in Jesus for your salvation, you're saved. If you do not believe in Jesus for your salvation, you're not saved. That is the distinction that John draws. So he's teaching the same thing as Paul and Peter, that faith in Jesus is what saves us. It's not through personal merit. In fact, in the Gospel of John, 99 times John references believe, 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 believe. That's the only requirement for salvation, not personal merit. 
So we've ruled out uh, Paul, Peter, and John. Who's left? Uh, let's look at James. Uh, it says in Acts 21, verse 20, when they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. Crying out, men of Israel, help, this is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law. So we are, here we have James boasting of all the Jews that now believe in Jesus and saying, look how religious they are. They love Judaism. They're really zealous for the law. But Paul, you're teaching people everywhere not to follow the law. So you have a huge difference in what James is teaching and what Paul, Peter, and John are teaching here. Um, and, and to prove that further, uh, James says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. By works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So, uh, I think based upon all this evidence here, now that we understand that Roman Catholicism is simply Judaism uh, and, and also Jesus. Judaism with Jesus. Uh, and we know that uh, Paul rejected that, teaching that you can't have Judaism and Jesus. You've got to leave Judaism and put your faith in Jesus entirely. Peter agreed, John agreed, and but the one that agrees with Roman Catholicism is the Apostle James, if he was an apostle, whoever wrote the book of James. Uh, he, he is teaching that uh, you're justified by uh, you're justified by uh, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So here we have someone who fits perfectly with the soteriology of uh, Roman Catholicism, and that is that uh, you must still continue following all the traditions of Judaism, uh, and you know where all these things I listed earlier. Let's see what were they? Uh, yes. Uh, we, you still need this priestly hierarchy. You, you need uh, the separation of the the uh, clergy from the, the 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 general population of believers. Uh, you know you, these costumes, the the legalism, the laws and commandments, the tradition, the rituals, the blood sacrifices. All of that is still continue doing all that. You don't give up on that. You got to keep doing all that. According to James, he is saying that. Uh, where look at all these Jewish believers who are so zealous for the, the law, for Judaism, for the customs and the traditions. Uh, so it seems to me, now that, now that we understand that Roman Catholicism is nothing more than a repacked, repackaged Judaism, uh, just as we see James taught, Judaism uh, that says they believe in Jesus, but they're still going to practice Judaism. And that's what Roman Catholicism is. They say they believe in Jesus, but they're still going to practice all the traditions of their religion. So, to me, someone who is really more suited to have the title of the, the first pope of Roman Catholicism, uh, no, it's not Peter, it's not Paul, it's not John. James is the one that fits the bill. James. Uh, but I, let me leave you with another thought, too. Roman Catholics, you know, they they keep on coming with, with a new pope, and I think the most recent one is called Pope Benedict. Uh, 
So the Roman Catholics still have their popes. Uh, but I believe there are actually more popes in today, uh, and not just the, the pope of Roman Catholicism. Uh, I believe that there's another large group of people who com agree completely with Roman Catholicism. They believe in all the legalism, the customs, the traditions, the... Uh, uh, faith in themselves and works uh, and, and Jesus. These people are who we call the Lordship Salvationists. These people uh, are actually just Roman Catholics, but they don't have Pope Benedict. A Lordship Salvationist is no different than a Roman Catholic because they believe faith in Jesus is not sufficient. More is required. And they'll give you all, everybody has their own list of requirements they will add. But none of them will say, faith in Jesus alone is all that's required. Something more is required of you. You've got to perform up to a certain level yourself in your religion. Uh, so, Lordship Salvationists are Roman Catholics, uh, but they don't have a Pope. Or do they? Uh, I think Rome, I'm, I'm sorry, Lordship Salvationists don't have Pope Benedict, but maybe they have Pope John MacArthur, or, or, or maybe they have Pope Paul Washer, or, or is it Pope uh, you know, Ray Comfort, or, 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 or any, any one of these Lordship Salvation leaders you see today. That's basically who their Pope is. They're Roman Catholics, but instead of Pope Benedict, they got Pope John MacArthur. Well, there you have it. So the truth is, uh, there is no apostolic succession uh, uh, going back to Peter. Uh, Peter was not the first pope. Uh, Peter, John, and Paul all agreed that uh, you've got to get rid of your faith in yourself and your faith in your own ability to be religious and instead put your faith completely in Jesus. But James fits the bill as the first pope. Uh, he believed you had to keep following the religion and traditions uh, in addition to uh, believing in Jesus. Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.